Welcome everyone and welcome to Aussie Tech Heads episode 313. Today, the 25th of October 2012, the 25th of October, that's right, Windows 8 launch eve. I know we're all excited. I know Eric's excited. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get into some Windows 8 I'm details. I'm so excited I can't speak. I know. He's been sitting there. He was even on the show, even in the lounge early. You know, he just can't wait to get it off his chest. All right. So welcome, everyone. Welcome, listeners, viewers in the lounge at uh, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash live. Uh, when it works, and um, yes, and there's a lot of other forward slash things, but um, but now what you can do is instead of remembering all that sort of stuff, just aussietechheads.com.au, and I've uh, put up a landing page so you can go into different directions just from the one spot. So uh, have a look at that, have a look at that, and then from from the Aussie Tech Heads podcasting page, you can browse, you can branch off into uh, the Shoutcast Radio. You can download apps on your phone, and you can listen to the radio, which is streaming twenty four seven, and not just our show. There's other shows. As well, uh, Mark shows on there. There's another local Gold Coast show called Coding by Numbers that's up, th- up there as well. And uh, I welcome any more, any more uh, audio podcasts, any more audio shows. If you've got one and you want to submit it to the playlist on the radio, email me. Let me know, and I'll tell you how to do it. All right, great exposure, great exposure. Let's get going. All right, now thanks to uh, Brad Tech Webcast info for the replay of your show before the. Aussie Tech Ed before tonight, live in the lounge. And that's at, uh, if you want the shortcut, is aussietechheads.com.au forward slash live. And uh, gave away two Apple TVs this week. So, um, yeah, good stuff. Brad's uh, on no, fire. I didn't get one. No, I didn't get one. I didn't either. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so that's good. Uh, and what else is going on? We've got the, the regular crew back here tonight. We've got Eric, Shane, and Will. So let's, uh, Jesus, getting a quite a, a round table these days. So, um where are we going to start? Let's start with Will because he wasn't here last week. How you going, Will? Oh, yeah, that'd be right. Pick on the new guy. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on? How's work? Oh, you know, in Good. between work and work, I haven't got time to do much work. Now, you've got you've re- redecorated your back bench by the look of it. I'm working on it. I got as far as putting half the green screen up and then I thought, oh, that looks horrible. And then I thought, well, hang on, I'm going to have monitors here. And so it's sort of, and then I'm like, oh, hang on, I've got a show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so everything's sort of just. <laughs> so is together. that, because like, Will's put up a, a monitor at the at behind him and, and he's just streaming the, the, the live recording as we go. And I can actually see, see the stream stuttering. So hopefully that's just Will's internet and not uh, not actually happening I mean, in the that's lounge. that's actually the uh, little EPC struggling to play. Oh, okay. That's good. All right. Now, Aussie Tech Heads every week. We'll get to the others in a second. I forgot one thing. Is uh, brought to you by the hosting team, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash hosting or the landing page hosting. Jump on there. Uh, great rates for hosting and domain names and, and, a lot of, and a lot of help if you ask. So uh, jump on aussietechheads.com.au forward slash hosting. Um, Eric, how are you going? I'm well, sir. How do you do? Good. Good. What's, what's up with you this week? Oh, not much. The usual Thursday. What can I say? Yeah, yeah. You stayed My up. Internet's playing up. <laughs> Good. You stayed <laughs> up last. Pardon? Stayed up last night for the Apple keynote or the other night. No, 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 no. No. Let's get. No, I just got up in the morning and watched the stream. Yeah, yeah. Same here. Well, pre-recorded already, stream on the website, so it was all right. Yep. And the, um, yes, I tested. I restarted my router and everything else before we start, as usual, and. Router was back to normal, and five milliseconds down, and 150, uh, five milliseconds and 115 down, and two and a half up. It's now yep. running at 171 milliseconds and 32 down. Well, I tell you, your video, your vision is it's coming. Crap. Th- no, it's coming through rather nice. I like the new soft light you've got going there. It looks oh, like what it is. Looks like you've been <laughs> uh, looks like you've been taking light lessons from uh, Babe TV. Good stuff. All right. No, I just uh, see, if, but I still get a reflection on my phone. I'm trying to work that out. Look, see, you yes. still can't see. That. Hold it, hold it top down a bit. That's better. Oh yeah, yeah. No, more to the side. No, it went off. Well, anyway, we can work on that. Uh-huh. It went off. All right. Now in the other, in the other corner, in the final corner, still, still, uh, still. No, turn it, turn it on its side a bit. I'll tell you when to stop. Turn it like left. Oh, left, 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 <laughs> left, left. Woo, that'll do. There you go. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That'll we can do. see it. That'll do. 
Go that's, away, yeah, that's, that's handy. Lucky that's going to be easy and not awkward. Yeah, that's easy to see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now anyway, uh, we dig- we digress. We do, and in, we we we've got to get moving because now that there's there's more of us, there's more stories to cover. So uh, in the in the final corner tonight, uh, Shane, how you doing, Shane? Good, Glenn and Will and Eric and everybody. Good. Hello, Shane. Good to hear. So um, now we've all got a heap of stories to get through tonight. Does anyone particularly want to start, or do you want me to start? It's your show. Start with your Go Microsoft fanboy <laughs> stories if you want. Oh, if we, if we must, if we must. But uh, yeah, so Windows 8, it's uh, tomorrow, 26th of October. It's a launch, launched in Australia, or well, midnight tonight. Harvey Norman's opening some Sydney metro stores. Uh, it's all going on. So uh, look, I've got a, cu- a couple of stats and stuff here. Three years in the making, uh, more than a year in beta testing. Windows 8 was released to manufacture on August the 1st. And as I said, it will be available tomorrow. Now, a new Refresh Your PC feature offers to replace the operating system without affecting user files. Got to love yeah, to see that. Okay. <laughs> I believe that when I see it. Love to see that one. Now, uh, and is accessed right from within Windows. So apparently, look, I've read from all, all accounts that I've read that it's wor- it works and it works rather good. So that's probably the first port of call or the first thing I'm going to probably try because I can't be bothered with a format and install. I really can't. So I'm going to try and do that. Um, another yeah, another, another function will perform a factory reset, which is probably what I'm going to have to end up doing. Now, there's four versions of uh, Windows that's being released. There's Windows RT, Windows 8 Basic, Windows 8 Pro, and Windows 8 Enterprise. Now, I've got a couple of little... Quick little, um, I don't know, benefits or features of each each one. If you if you bear with me, if you want to hear about them, Windows 8 Basic probably not the one for most people, but it's uh, targeted at consumers and most people who would otherwise purchase Windows 7 Home Edition. So I'm not sure who has actually purchased Windows 7 Home. Probably probably everyone. It's available. Well, that would be the one that comes on the um, PCs, probably the OEM version. It possibly could be. Yes, yes. Just if you want to get the the old cheapo, that's the that's the one they're going to put on. Now, it's, uh, it's available in uh, x86 and x64 desktop laptops and tablets, including the Windows 8 start screen and desktop environment, basic network and connected standby, connected standby, networking and connected standby, Internet Explorer 10, and support for live tiles. Oh, we all love those live tiles. The Windows 8 basic oh, yeah. edition will have access to the Windows Store, but it's unclear whether it will be able to download and run apps installed from elsewhere. Um, the the edition supports multiple monitors. I didn't think that was like an option, eh? I would have thought that that would have just been a, just a everything just does that. But anyway, obviously doesn't. No, because I think from memory, I could be wrong, but I thought Windows Seven Basic, and I think they did the same with Vista. They can the multi monitor support. Yeah, right. They probably couldn't get it working in Vista. That was the <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> So they can't. They made a new version of Windows just <laughs> just without it. <laughs> all right, now um, where where are we up to? So that now Windows uh, Window Eight Pro is on top of all the basic features. This edition can join a, a Windows Server domain and accept group policies, operate as a remote desktop client. You know, blah blah blah. BitLocker drive encryption. Uh, Windows Eight delivers MBAM two, an all new enterprise ready version of Microsoft's BitLocker administration monitoring and encryption solution. Whew, good stuff. And there's all this other stuff in there too. So it's intended for users and enthusiasts and business uh, intended for enthusiasts and business professionals. It is the successor to Windows 7 Professional and Windows 7 Ultimate and the last version Windows 7 uh, Windows 8 Enterprise. So obviously built for the enterprises, uh, automatic and secure VPN, connections and group policy enforcement, remote FX visualization. Now, one of the cool things about the Windows 8 Enterprise is it's got a win- it's what they've got a Windows to go. Now, Windows to go providing not only uh, the long-awaited ability to boot f- uh, Windows from a USB device, but implement the user's personalised Windows desktop with folder redirection and synchronizers of all the changes. Now, Windows to go provides tremendous flexibility to work from different places at airports, airplanes, in coffee shops, hotels, and from any number of devices. Uh, Windows to go images are full, fully manageable in the System Center 2012, can be remotely wiped, can take advantage of direct access for application of group policies and security updates. It's not a, a virtualization solution. Windows to go executes a full set of binaries, discovers devices, and installs drivers for the host machine. It even remembers those what settings. What I don't tell you is it takes three hours to boot. <laughs> it probably would too. <laughs> but anyway, if it, if it works, 
if it, if it works like it, it it's um it's uh written, I reckon it'd be good. That'd be good. Yeah, I can imagine Windows, you know, being so stable that it'll handle multiple machines. Mm. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so um, all right. Three years in the making, one year in beta testing, and one month to fail. <laughs> it'll be and right. five years to try and recoup your money. <laughs> Hang on, I've just got a skeptic. Will stop it. <laughs> Sorry, I just had a UAC. It's uh, right now. <laughs> Just oh, out no. of the just out of the blue. <laughs> so hang on, hang on. I'm trying to recover from the UAC. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good like... God, Windows! We're talking about Windows, we're trying to give you a Why leg do you up. Even have that Throw me on. your bone, Windows. Who well, you, who leaves that on? Seriously, me, because I'm I'm scared of of um, things. <laughs> I'm scared of viruses <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> just hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm just trying to get something's trying to run. And then I don't know what it is, so just hold, hold, hold. It's probably Microsoft trying to tell you they've got a new version of Windows out. It could be too. <laughs> you need to upgrade. This one keeps UACing. All right, I think, <laughs> have I got it? Is this right now? Oh, God knows. All right, well, let's just move on. I don't know if it's, it's, it's gone away, so um, that's okay. That's okay. All right. Yeah, but some of you. Yeah. No, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. I've got it. I've got it. I'm back. All right, now... Um, Moving on, look, there's going to be a few, little bit of a Windows thing here tonight. So does anyone else have any comments on Windows 8? I've got a few more, um, but if anyone else wants to jump in. Uh, Microsoft. You really want me to jump in, do you, Glenn? <laughs> really? Oh, you love it. Microsoft. Think, yep. Will. Yeah, I was going to say, look, it's, it's like any new Windows. It's, it's going to be bagged. It's going to be heralded. But it's only going to be, you know, it's going to take six months and then it'll settle down and people actually, you actually get an opinion of what it's actually like. People start using it in the real world. There'll be, you know, real world crashes. There'll be real life, you know, things that aren't expected to happen. There'll be updates, you know. So it, it really will take six months before you'll get a true interpretation. Having said that, I wonder if we're going to see, you know, a two kilometre long lineup at Harvey Norman. Uh, I don't think so. Two kilometres? <laughs> two metres? But you're talking about... I think it'd be two people. Yeah, but yeah. I, but but you're talking about an operating system, and I know the the slate or what do they call it? The surface is coming out as well. But yeah. you know, people don't line up for iOS; they're lining up for the device. So um, yeah, we'll see, we'll, we'll, that's we'll, right. We'll see how that one goes. Uh, you can look if you if you're keen, and this is tonight for uh for or Friday morning if you if you're really keen. The keynote: Microsoft to webcast Windows 8 launch live. Um, and Eric make make a date at 1:15 a.m. On Friday morning. Well, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to stay up for that because um, the bandwidth is going to be crystal clear because there'll yeah, be no one else watching it. <laughs> I might, uh, I might even watch that. At one fifteen. What time I'm zone? Up well, that's one fifteen a.m. Queensland. I've worked it out to be so that'll be two fifteen a.m. Sydney time, and that'll be what twelve fifteen a.m. Perth time. So yeah, anyway, eleven fifteen p.m. Yes, sorry, you are right. At one fifteen is eleven. Yes, that's right, eleven. So you, you might be able to catch that one, Shane. But it's the only um, it is the only part of the day long event in New York that will be publicly broadcast throughout the day. Microsoft will show off Windows eight to its Windows eight, its own Surface RT tablet and new hardware from some of its partners. Does anyone know what RT stands for? I looked it up last week. It doesn't stand for anything. Yet? Doesn't stand for anything. It's yeah, the well, one that nothing, works you know. on their arm devices. Yeah, but no one knows yeah, what it stands for. It stands for something like iOS sounds for Internet Operating System. Really tacky? For example. <laughs> All right. Or <laughs> well, yeah, something something <laughs> archaic like that would probably... Reliable runtime. and yeah. tangible? Runtime no, sounds like a rap group. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. I looked it up. All and, right. and, 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 so, I released, a release I, test. I don't think Microsoft know. They went, oh, RT sounds all right. Mm. I have a question about the time, the one fifteen a.m. on the 26th. Yep. That's not in America. That won't be the 26th. That's the 27th right? here. No, I've, I've converted it yeah. to Australian time. It's the 25th at 11.15 a.m. Um, EDT. So <laughs> It's not launched until the... the you sure you haven't converted it the other way, mate? Yeah. No, I used a time converter <laughs> on the internet. Yes, but That'll what's right. the date that it's released <laughs> oh, in America? You bloody forward slaps. 
I've, I've already converted it. No, you haven't. Well, Shane, <laughs> you know, what's the what's the, um, the release date in America, mate? Oh, it's the 26th in America. Right, and which means it'll be the 27th here. 7th over here, not yeah. The twi- not the, yeah. Well, why is it launched tomorrow? Why is it available in the shop tomorrow? Because... That's a good point. The midnight keynote... tonight. Yeah, so... Um... Yeah, midnight tonight. Yeah, because we're... Eight, what are we? 12 hours or so ahead. So that'll be right. The yeah, 26th. So we get it first. Midnight the 26th is um, the 27th. Or is it the other way around? Yeah. No, look, no, they were, we're in front of them. So yeah. you the 25th there. Look, 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 look. I've already converted it. Okay. I don't know. What, why are you. Yeah. The 25th fair will be. This the is great radio. Well, anyway, by the way. <laughs> Why, why, <laughs> why are you casting aspersions on my ability to be able to... I'm not... Hang on. I'm waiting. Look, there's a web... I'm going to the website right now, um, if the internet can handle it. <laughs> Looks like the Microsoft site is just back-circling. I hate when the web pages back-circle. Here we go. Here we go. Because I, I saw the banner. Watch live webcast, October 25, 11.15 a.m. EDT. Can you just handle that? Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's EDT in America, not here. I didn't say it. it was in America. I said I converted the time for us. I've already done that, and it's at one fifteen a.m. Our yeah. time. Yes. All right. Let's get... Well, what's that? That what you've got on the screen there? <laughs> yeah. Well, what date is that? October is that coming 25. from Microsoft Australia or Microsoft or US? US. Microsoft.com. Right. And what's the date say? October 25. 11.15 okay. a.m. I promise never to ask another question. <laughs> That's all right. It's good to ask questions. So, <laughs> I, like pulling, I like pulling people up. So, so Eastern Daylight Time in America, that's New York time. Look, I just use an online time calculator. I punched in October 25, 11.15 a.m. New York, and it gave me 1.15 a.m. Queensland. All right. So you keep, you keep talking. All right, you check that one out. Microsoft.com forward slash en hyphen us forward slash news. No, nah, I'll do Yeah, I'll well, that'll be about right out. because when Twit wraps up their broadcast about five o'clock in the afternoon, it's like eight o'clock here. So, all right, so anyway, not that anyone's ever going to watch it anyways. I don't know what we're, we're worrying about. <laughs> all right, so now look, Microsoft is also uh, just going back to this, um, you know, the antitrust problems that they've been having. They've been warned that not to not to encroach and, and duplicate the problems that have plagued them previously. Now, for those of you who go have heard a lot about antitrust and you go, what the hell is this antitrust business that I keep hearing about? I've got a definition for you. Antitrust laws, also known as competition law com, yeah, competition laws, are legal rules to promote fair competition in the marketplace. These laws can abide, apply to both business and individuals. Antitrust laws are designed to prevent actions that might hurt consumers or unfairly harm other businesses. Blah blah blah. So that's why. So remember, they got they got fined something like um, what a billion a billion dollars overall. I think something like that uh, for 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 not allowing users to install another browser uh, when installing Windows or our version of Windows. So. Um, so now what they've got to do is, go. yeah, is somehow put, have, have provide the choice, especially in the European Union, a choice of browser upon uh, on the installation of Windows. But don't you need a browser to install another browser? No, because no, when you click on which one it is, it will be preloaded on the disk or on the install. Mm. But don't forget, Internet Explorer never leaves Windows because Windows is based <coughs> on Internet Explorer. So even if you don't, install in that explorer it's always on the system because that's if you actually go through the register and remove it nothing works your, your my computer doesn't work you know network that doesn't work mm. so look I, I don't i don't actually i don't think that i agree with the, the ruling of antitrust i think if microsoft's developed the product um yes they've what so it's bad luck to have created their own monopoly like i don't know i don't I know think I it goes deeper that. than that because a few years ago Internet Explorer miraculously, or Windows miraculously, introduced a bug that was unfixable that stopped um, 
you know, Netscape and Firefox from actually functioning on Windows. And that's what started the whole ball rolling. Okay. They're like, well, hang on. Okay, not supplying it's one thing. Completely mm. stopping Blocking that program it. from running yeah. is something entirely different. So that's sort of where it all yeah. goes back to. But even yeah. now, like there's some, there's Microsoft, parts of the Microsoft website that, that won't really work <laughs> properly if you're not using... Or Queensland government website for that matter. Mm. And uh, I saw... You're still running on Netscape, 3, Netscape Gold 3.01. <laughs> no, what was Netscape it? Navigator Gold. <laughs> oh, Never to gold, sorry. What was that other piece of pus that had its own interface? Um, Chrome? No. <laughs> no, it was like a bit of a, a colourful interface. I don't know what it was. It was a whole, a whole different world. Um, I can't remember the name, but it'll come to me. But anyway. Oh, there's a few of them, but yeah. Yeah, it was... Um, All right, back a. to the time that uh, Glenn said. Uh, you're right, Glenny. Oh, thanks. 11.15am um, 11, 11, on the 25th in Manhattan, New York is 2.15 a.m. here, which makes it 1.15 a.m. there. All right. I'm glad we got that sorted out. So, so it's, uh, it's being launched. That means it's still going to be launched like a day early or something. No. Well, it's launched. No, where, where does time travel because we're in Australia? <laughs> yeah. So I think it's um, – yeah, I don't know. I don't know. While we're going back with things quickly, Windows RT, in the chat room, they're correct. It does, RT does technically stand for runtime. Uh, in the uh, but that's something the, else the typical framework for metro apps and whatever. But when it comes to the Windows naming convention, RT is purely there to distinguish it as an OEM product pre-installed on the ARM processor tablets and PCs. So there well, you go. That's the it same. Just a stupid name. Oh, well, well, <laughs> what sort of name was XP? It's the same thing. What does XP stand for? It's extra, but it's good for experience. Or something. It should know yeah. experience. It sounded for originally. Yeah. XP was experience. Yeah. Right. Well, anyway, now I've got RT. They probably they probably go one better next year and go RS. Oh no, that was... yeah. Well, it will be RS <laughs> next year. Surprised they don't call it IXL. EU <laughs> EU antitrust regulators told Microsoft not to repeat the mistake of denying consumers a choice of rival web browsers. So we've said all that. After discussions with the Commission, we are changing some aspects of the way the browser choice screen works on Windows 8. And, the, and we'll have those changes implemented when Windows 8 launches later this week, Rob, uh, Microsoft spokesman said in a statement. Microsoft promised three years ago to offer browser choices to settle an EU antitrust investigation and avoid a penalty that could have been as much as 10% of its global earnings. But the European wow. Commission said Microsoft had not fulfilled its pledge between February last year and July this year. So God knows what they're doing. Microsoft could face a significant fine as it is the second time it had failed to comply with the EU order. So, um, All right, yeah, now I'm going to rain on your parade now. Go. <laughs> what are you About got? Microsoft. Yeah, go. Um, uh, what are we here? There's a report about it's together with, meanwhile, this is Apple, Microsoft, tape, tablet tactics leave consumers disgruntled. It appears the tablet honeymoon may be at an end. Blah, 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 blah. And it goes on to say, what the hell is that? That's, that's <laughs> Will's chair. <laughs> Just make yourself comfortable, Will. Yeah. 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 How big is that chair, mate? Goes on to say. Um, Not as big as it needs to be. Meanwhile, Microsoft has just, has just finished pulling together pre-release reviews of its flagship Surface tablet, and by many reports, they're far from glowing. Mmm, what a surprise. Do you know my main can worry with the Windows tablets? I reckon apps. No, I think they might be. Too well, I got that goes on to say that the early reviews suggest Microsoft tablet is priced similarly to the iPad, has snappy hardware performance, and attractive lines. Its camera and communications options are also comparable, but the tablet cannot run regular Windows PC programs as many had hoped, or Android applications, and so far has very few of its own. Mm. Applications, but that that will change. I don't think that's a big a big yeah, problem. That's gonna change. that's gonna change yeah, overnight. Yeah, it will change. It has to change. It'd be stupid not to. And we all know it will change, and it'll ch it should change for the better. But wouldn't you think that an experienced company like Microsoft, with supposed geniuses that earn a squillion dollars a year, well, how many apps would have did thought they that, that they should have got their um, development kit out to the developers? You know when the development kit came out to the developers? A month before the release of the tablet. That's when yeah. they got the, the development kit to start developing apps for it. A month before. 
Mm. Apple sends a development Rubbish. kit out 12 months before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, well, that's, that's no good. So, everyone, you, you, know, you would have watched the uh, Apple keynote about the iPad. We'll, go, we'll, get, we'll get, do that a bit later. Because I've, got, I've still got, we've got, to, we've got to move on because we've got heaps of stories. <laughs> heaps to get through. So, um, yeah, so I, I just reckon the biggest problem with the Windows stuff is that I think it's going to be too heavy. They're too heavy. Now, what the the, ga- <laughs> the 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 device itself is heavy, or the or the I think programs it, are going to be too sluggish. Well, isn't it, isn't it going to be up to nearly a kilo or something? I think it's going to be too heavy. Yeah, it's, no, I think it's more than that. It's, it's so you can yeah, It's too heavy. You won't be able to it's hold that. That'd be the pounds, I, think it was. I don't think you'd be able to hold that for a, an extended period of time. No, it's like a laptop. Not so good. Oh, I've got the specs here. Um, Surface with Windows RT. 1.5 pounds, so that's three quarters. Of, is that three quarters of a kilo, thereabouts? Yeah. Windows yeah, Surface Pro with Windows 8 Pro is two pounds. So it's a kilo. Mm. 1.2 well, kilos. I think that'd so be too pretty heavy, heavy mm. for a tablet. Yeah. When you consider the iPad is the is what? What's the new one out? What's the stats on that? It's something like 680 grams or some ridiculous thing. Mm. Yeah, I just think it's just give me too heavy. But like, I, I don't, I like it. I, I'd like to get one. But and again, I think that's too expensive as well. But then again, well, the that's iPad- part of the problem. I think that they entering a new, they're trying to create a niche in the marketplace. You can't go up head to head with Apple. Well, the up. only way they could, the only way they could support these prices is if they had an app store that was really good. Everyone would go, you know what? 700 bucks for a tablet, that's great. I've got 100,000 apps, that's fantastic, let's go. Do you know what? It's be, it'd be my problem and probably a lot of other people's problems is that it's too dear. Everyone by now that has, has wanted a, a tablet has probably got one and it, this is just too expensive. It's, an iPad. it's too expensive to say, well, I want to try that one. I don't want to try that one. I've already got one. I'll stick with what I've got. I reckon, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so. you're right. No one's going to give up the apps for the last two and a half years that they've purchased on, on Apple and all mm. the apps that work and, you know, the hundreds of dollars that you've spent to try a Surface tablet with no apps. Mm. But they'll That's get right. there. And that wouldn't be gonna... that bad if it could run normal Windows programs. And you think, oh, okay, it runs normal Windows programs. Well, That's it can't cool. because it's an ARM processor. That's but, what I mean. It can't. Yeah, but if it's it not did, even that. Like then you go the other way, you're not going to get the people from Android going to it for once and you haven't got the apps. But the thing is the tablet's twice the price of an equivalent that's right. Android tablet. So that's right. you've stalemated yourself on both fronts. Right. That's right. Exactly. Now, so uh, they, that's why they should have either allowed Android to port across easily by giving the development kit out months in advance mm. um, or develop their own by de- giving the development kit out months in advance. And yeah. then they could support these prices because it's got a, an ecosystem behind it that will support the purchase price. Yeah, I know. Um, because there's nothing runs on it. You can't even run normal Windows <laughs> Prime. What's? Why would you buy it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, uh, uh, it'll 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 work for them. It's just going to be a little bit of time. Now, Shane, you had a uh, story there about the tablet. Did you have anything else to add onto all that? Um, I actually queued up a different story when we were talking about Windows 8. And, oh, that's all right. Well, yeah, you, you queue on queue on with what you queued. Um, basically, I um, stumbled across a story where uh, Edbot actually compared XP and Windows 8, and um, they had a similar kind of um, beginning where everyone sort of bagged XP and all that kind of stuff and it was slow to take way. hold. Mm. In the first, um, on the first anniversary of Windows XP, the release of Microsoft is a little, little to celebrate. Um, users cling to old Microsoft operating system in in year two, and basically, yeah, you know, we know the rest of the history. XP turned out to be the best version of Windows that you know, Microsoft ever produced, and and the the story basically kind of says that yeah, you know, the the potential for Windows 8 to um to do the same thing. Mm. Well, look, I've got no problems in in go in upgrading to uh, to Windows uh, eight. No problems at all. None at all. I'll do it. Uh, look, I, I've been running the the um, the pre-release version, whatever you call it, the beta version. It's been working great. It's 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 great. It's it's just as snappy as Windows seven. No problems at all. No 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 um, no problems at all. So uh, looking forward to it. Looking forward to getting on. Well, the- I've downloaded it today from the TechNet store. Yeah, and uh, I'm not sure if I'll. Um, uh, Office 13, Glenn, is out too. By the way, if you want to grab that, I'll have a look into that. Came out today. All right, good mm-hmm. stuff. It's now, really nice. 
Oh, have you have you installed it? Yeah, it's really nice. Hmm. All right, let's do, let's just uh, change uh, ch- change the uh, the uh, mood a bit That's here and just have pull it we'll put it put a little fluffy story in. Now, Perth man over near where Shane is survives a garbage truck dive for a laptop. So a, ma- a man searching for his laptop in a Perth CBD dumpster has escaped uninjured after being tipped into a garbage truck. A, f- a fire and emergency authority of Western Australia spokeswoman told. Uh, told IT News that two fire trucks were sent to rescue the man after receiving a call from police. Um, yeah, blah, blah, blah. A garbage truck had emptied the dumpster from a property opposite the Perth Concert Hall on St George's Terrace where the driver heard screams coming from the back of the truck. He called police. The, the um, a spokeswoman said that the trapped man had been unable to escape because there was no ladder inside of the truck. Well, okay, good. It took about 20 minutes to free him. He didn't find his laptop. I reckon he was sleeping in there. Um, can I just make a comment about the photo? Yes. Can't obviously be a real photo relating to the story because our garbage trucks don't look like that, and that definitely isn't St George's Terrace in the background. That don't matter. <laughs> you get the idea. That's an American garbage truck. It's actually coming from the wrong side of the truck. It's not even oh, an yeah, Australian true, truck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's just pick me to pieces tonight. <laughs> Jeez. Sorry. <laughs> oh, hang on. That's not your fault. Google Hangouts flipped the image. Yeah, thanks, Will. That's what's happened. That's what's happened. <laughs> now, uh, Amazon Web Services. Anyone get get caught up in the web outage from Amazon this week? I say uh, they went down. Um, I got an email about it about the S three problem, but um, I never actually major it didn't actually affect me because I didn't. Major wasn't popular using. internet locations such as Reddit, Foursquare went out through the week thanks to an issue affecting Amazon's Elastic Cloud Compute in North Virginia in the U.S. Cloud application platform site Heroku reported elevated error rates and set its application programming interface in read-only mode while engineers worked on recovering the databases. So this is like not the first time that Amazon Amazon has had a bit of a fall-up, falling over. So, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, Foursquare, what's that? Airbnb and Pinterest. Uh, notifying users via tweets that their sites are down. So uh, yeah, there's a yeah, I got I got the one from Minecraft saying that their site was down. This is like after half an hour of trying to figure out why I can't connect to the server. Yeah, well, there was a there was some uh, CRM that I started having a look at that actually went down as well. Got the emails to say you know we're down, we're down. So no good, no good if you if you rely on this sort of stuff, you know, and it's it's a you know no good at all. Um, all right, um, who wants to talk about something else? Anyone got anything else? Oh, I'm getting All a right. bit sick of Microsoft, I tell you. Well, how about we do one more? Because right. there's one more be- before we can move on entirely. One more? Uh, one, well, more. one more? I yes, found that's a story about the surface. I think you're the only person doing promotion for Microsoft. I think you're doing more promotion than they are. <laughs> oh, well, look, it's, it's good. It's, it's, you know, it's a... Every, look, 90, what is it, 90% of the world You're going uses to the Windows. dark side. What are you doing? 90, I'm, Luke, already, I'm already at the Luke, dark side. No, 90% the dark side, of people use Windows in the world. 90%. What's that? 90% of Windows. No, it wouldn't be that anymore, mate. wouldn't be that anymore. Well, 85, whatever it is. It's, it's still no. a majority. It's a vast no. majority. And it's they're a, all stupid. It's a vast majority. But anyway, this is, my, this is my last story on Windows because it's not really what well, it is. Microsoft says Skype is ready for Windows 8. Redesigned Skype will appear on Windows 8 start screen as a live tile. Along with using the tile to launch Skype, the tile will show when the user has a missed call or a new message waiting. whoopee do. But one of the uh, interesting things about this is that I see that you can switch between audio and a video call without interruption, which is good if it works. That'd be good. We've designed, you won't. We, we've designed Skype for Windows 8 to focus on the way you use Skype. Your conversations... Great. Does that mean it'll never work in any other version of Windows anymore? Not that it... There you go. Works. Thank you. Don't download it. <laughs> well, you probably won't be able to... Maybe can't upgrade to the new version in previous operating systems. So the new... The They'll new, force an upgrade and then they say, hey, this, this isn't compatible. <laughs> the new Skype right. is also... Then linked. you'll crash your system, have to reformat your disk and reinstall everything from scratch. Ah, uh, we should have backed up. The new Skype is also linked to the Windows 8 People application, the operating system's new take on contact lists and address books. So, yeah, so a Skype contacts will show up in the People app. So it's all changing. It's all changing. No start And button. for the better, I'm assuming. Oh, yes. 
now, much Eric, better. Now, Eric, you so do. So, do you think um, Skype will take over from MSN Messenger and all that kind of stuff? Well, that's a good oh, question. Yeah, they have to, wouldn't it? Yeah. Why would they be bothered to um, to run well, both? It's, it's been MSN Messenger has been integrated into Skype for quite a while. So, no, oh, is it? I've never never used Messenger. Yeah. I don't think I've ever <clears throat> turned that thing on. I I think I've used, used Messenger since for about nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah, I've never used it. Back when, uh, uh, what was the other one? ICQ. Yep. I remember that, yeah. Oh, look, I just got one more picture to show you. It's a Harvey Norman store. Harvey Norman. Oh, I said that at the That's start. It's live at Harvey Norman. Look, there's nobody there. <laughs> well, they're not open. <laughs> He, um, so Ooh. Metro stores will stay open through the, to, to the midnight launch. Other stores around Australia will close at normal time and open early Friday morning. In order to train staff for the new operating system, Harvey Norman ran a week-long certification course to verify 350 retail workers as Window 8 specialists. The specialists will be dressed what in... Are they, what are they calling them, geniuses? No, they're just specialists, um, like, like Sylvester Stallone. The specialists will be dressed in green and on hand at launch to advise customers on the 30 Windows 8 gadget gadgets Harvey Norman will have in store. You know what? I'm tempted to go down there tonight. You are for a not. laugh. <laughs> You'll take it. No, not to buy it. I want to take my camera and film it <laughs> and talk to everyone in the crowd. And go. So why are you buying this piece of shit? Oh look, I don't think it's uh, it'd be like the Windows 95 days. I lined up for 95. I was at Harvey Norman. Oh, did you lined up for that too? I did line up for that. But uh, yeah, see, that's the thing. Apple now is what Microsoft used to be. Windows yeah. 95 was massive. Yeah. That was such a huge but deal. It was funny. Mm. Back when Windows 95 was released, we got the stock because I was selling at the time. We got the stock a week early. So I had it installed on my system a week before. And then we actually had systems, Microsoft sent us for demo systems about two weeks earlier than that. So for like nearly a month before it was launched, People were playing with it. Yeah, yeah, but look, the finished yeah. version. Did you line up, Shane? For Windows ninety five. Yeah, I don't think I was old enough to be allowed out by myself back then. No. Oh, <laughs> 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 you bloody young people! I don't know what's going on. What's going on ninety five. Yeah, well, yeah, I was old enough. For it was a big deal until you got home and had to put twelve discs into a floppy. No, no, I had the yeah, CD. Wait I, your single speed pioneer cartridge load. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. I, I wanted it on cassette. Run on your four eight six. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah, four eight six DX two sixty six with eight meg of RAM and an A fifty meg quantum hard drive. Yeah, baby. And a sixteen pin dot matrix printer. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right. baby. Now, Eric, you. Yeah, I'm, I'm kicking goal now. Now, Eric mentioned just before Office uh, 2013, Microsoft is offering yep. free upgrades to its Office 2013 suite to new buyers of Office 2010. So if you buy 2010, you're going to go and be able to get a free upgrade. Of 2013, yep. Office 2013 is currently available as a downloadable preview and expected to launch in the final form later this week or early next week. Existing yeah, well, already out. Yeah. Um, existing 2010 customers and those who have bought the Productivity suite through the volume home, you blah blah blah, all that blah blah blah. Yeah, so that's good. There we go. All right. Yeah. There now, you go. Now, um, Shane, you got, you got a story? Um, I've got a few. About yeah. Linux, anything, I don't care. <laughs> no, I'm finished. <laughs> well, all right. Well, I'm just going to touch on a couple of things. Um, I found a story where Microsoft has oh, uh, no. based on <laughs> pre sales. <laughs> That that company that produces the um the slate, uh, the the what do they call it? Surface, um, sold out of the thirty two gigabyte Surface in Australia based on pre sales anyway. Yeah, right. So Kogan. Someone obviously. Not Kogan. <laughs> Kogan was it? Kogan <laughs> selling them for below cost again? Was he? <laughs> no, nah, tell me, tell me a little um, tell me a little kind of story. It doesn't really go into too much detail. That's why I've just kind of pooned over it. All right. Um, well, thirty two gig seems to be the popular size. Makes sense. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Um, I've got one from left field. Google Maps The um, is going to do like a street view thing of popular trails in the Grand Canyon. Oh, that's not and, bad. Oh, and other um, national parks and, and tourist things like that. They're, um, I think they're, they're looking for volunteers to sort of go hiking through those sorts of places with one of those weird looking backpack camera things on their head. 
Um, yeah, that'd be fun. Wouldn't be very heavy at all. No, nah, nah, it's um. Actually, I got the, the weight of it here. It's eighteen kilos. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it'll break your neck. <laughs> and that's not including the water, the you know everything else you've got to carry as well. <laughs> the article yes. that I found, um, the article reports Sleeping that bag. he was attempting to map a number of world famous national parks and other tourist attractions. Street View style. The article details Google efforts to map the popular Grand Canyon trails by uh, reporting that some guy called Luke Vincent, who's the Google engineering director, strapped on the 18 kilo Google camera backpack and started on the 16 kilometer Bright Angel Trail to the Colorado River. The backpack has 15 cameras and captures Ooh. images every two and a half seconds. The article also goes on to say that the um, that Google really has no other competition with regard to a Street View style surface, um, unless you can count the um, efforts of Apple. No, I don't think No, you can. no, no, can't count that. Even That's Apple don't count those. No, I think... No. <laughs> I, I, Apple look, will tell everyone to go, go, go get you some other map, buddy. Look, it's a Google bit... Google Maps did just release something like, I don't have the, the story in front of me, but I heard today they released something like 600,000 building ma- images. So when you view, not in the satellite view, but in the normal street view sort of thing there's you can wander around yeah, and they just released something like 600,000 new 3D rendered buildings alright so uh, I think the best thing that Apple can do I know they won't do it but geez they, they probably should, just, should dump it and just go back to Google <laughs> they've just got to do something haven't they um, look, not no, that it impacts, they won't. look it doesn't impact my life at all to the honest truth it doesn't impact my life I've, um, I've used the Google Maps I've used the where look the where is is just as out of date as, as the Apple you know, like it, it's the last. Oh, not quite. Nearly, nearly. Oh, it's a fair one. Getting there. It, well, when here you're in Brisbane, is. I use uh, near maps for Brisbane CBD and surrounding districts. It's super high resolution. That's within a couple of months. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Look, I don't. I don't. I've, I've find, be finding my way around with um, uh, with where is and and Apple Maps it doesn't impact on my life. All right. So let's. I'll tell you uh, what is good though. Speaking of mapping software, they just mentioned the Nokia mapping software in the chat room. That's really good. Okay. The other one that is really good is the Samsung, um, the Samsung mapping um, navigation software. It is incredibly detailed and really, really good. Um, it's it's free if you have Samsung products. You can you can actually get that for free. It's fully downloaded, so it can be used offline and does turn by turn, does everything. Um, and if you don't have a Samsung product, I think it's like nine dollars. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. That's, yes. I think you might. It's be not right. bad. No, all right. Well, let's let's have a bit of a bit of a break, and uh, we'll hear from Garth. Garth is back. He's got another app review for us this week. Another iOS app review. Uh, what is he? He's about four minutes. So we'll we'll go to Garth, and we'll uh, hear what he what he, what he's up to this week, if we can hear him. We can't Nothing hear him. Here. He can't. We can't hear him. Hang on, hang on. I, I see why. It's that damn mute button. <laughs> hey everyone, it's uh, Glenn and Garth here with you again. Uh, Garth, a bit, bit flexible this week. What do you got? Hey Glenn, how are you going? Oh, I love that one. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you got? I've got an app called Flexi. Yo. Um, now it's a little bit... Oh, we did that last week. All right. No Garth this week. I don't know what's going on with Garth. He's going all over the place. I'm sure I picked up the right one. Just hang on a sec. Just bear with us. And we'll... Um... Oh, I'm sure... I recognise the top you're wearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's going with us? Who's got another story? Put the pressure on. Um, I've got one that is loosely related to the Windows RT thing. Okay. Go. Uh, large number of um, Dell HP printers multifunctions are incompatible with Windows RT. Mm. Uh, HP and Dell published compatibility lists of printers and multifunction devices of the upcoming Windows 8 and RT tablet OSs with a large number of uh, models listed as being incompatible with Windows RT. Microsoft earlier this year warned some of the older printers would not work with Windows 8 and RT, which is uh, where the software maker's first OS, hang on, RT, which is the first software maker's first OS for ARM processors. That's a barely written sentence. Mm, well, um, there's a lot of those. While, while, 
while the majority of printers uh, will not work with, uh, will don't support RT, the compatibility list does reveal the uh, wider support for just a normal Windows 8 OS, um, which is the successor to Windows 7. Um, and it just goes on to kind of go in more detail about you know, the differences between ARM and, um, and the regular Windows 8. And the has a couple of lists of the actual printers. There's 200 laser printers in color, laser printers, um, multi-purpose devices, not compatible with Windows RT, total of 83, 83, uh, and 83 offer limited support for RT. HP has not yet released a compatibility list for inkjet printers. All right. So I skipped over bits of that. All right, so RT, yeah, so problems there. All right, so look, we're going to try Garth again. <laughs> see, see if we can get him, see if we can get him this time. The right one, I mean. I don't know what's going on. At a, at, a, at a failure. I've had some sort of failure. But um, hang on, let, let's see. Have we got the right... I was right... going to say it was an awfully short four minutes. It was. Let, let's, let's just <laughs> go back here and <laughs> see if we've got it this time. Hey, everyone. It's uh, Glenn and Garth here with you again. Uh, Garth, a bit, bit flexible this week. What do you got? Hey, Glenn. Oh, how see. you going? It's the same one. I've just renamed it wrong. Anyway, we're going we're gonna... to... You're on fire, dude. Oh, tell me about uh... it. I can't believe that. Anyway, we'll move on. Move on. All right. Fix it and post. <laughs> no, nah, too late. Too late. We'll have to do it next week. <laughs> I try to do too many things at once, and that's what happens. All right. Um, well, let's, let's go. Apple. Eric. Oh, mate, I'm about to fall asleep. You're going to talk about Apple now. <laughs> what, what's going on? Bloody Microsoft. What's wrong with you? Oh, you got to cover it. That's big. That's big. It's not big at all. Windows 8. Bloody hell. Anyway, we all know the iPad Mini that we that the supposed surprise came out the other day. Yep. Um, not much to say, other than the fact that it's out, and uh, I still think it's a bit pricey, a bit more pricey than I expected. Well, I've got a little. But graphic I still think here. they'll sell millions of these little suckers. Mm. Um, it is a bit pricey. I'm I'm a bit concerned about that. I think that where they're going to sell millions of these is into the schools. I think this is where the schools will pick all this up. I think this is where textbooks will be no more. And no, I, I disagree. You can't have no textbooks. Well, I reckon that's where it's yeah, going to You ever head. tried to read off an iPad for eight hours a day? Your eyes would fall out of your head. Yeah, yeah, true. But, th but that, <laughs> didn't they, they showed that nighttime or whatever, that black background screen. Black background. Well, that might help. But I think it'll be, it'll be a very important supplementary to their education. Mm. But yeah, so I was a all the thick textbooks might be on there, but people as kids are still gonna write on paper. Because you've got to do math sums and write essays and all that sort of stuff. So I think it's going to it's gonna still be part of their education, but I don't think it's gonna take over. It was uh they look they uh the price this was a bit of a disappointment for me. I thought it was a little bit too dear. Well I've just got a little graphic here of the, the comparison between the prices. Now it's probably a bit too it's probably a bit hard for you guys to see down there. No, I can see that on the screen, but uh, um, that, that's just a comparison between the iPad Mini, the iPad Two, and the iPad. So the iPad Three, and that's another thing, is the iPad Three, the one they released seven months ago. If I had bought one of them, I don't know if I'd be ex extremely happy, especially if I had bought one with the the um, the four G, supposed four G, you know, and it didn't work in Australia. Now this new one's come out with the with the working Australian four G chip. But um, look, getting back to prices, iPad Mini, sixteen gig starts at three sixty nine. So yeah, that's, that's a bit rich. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen two ninety. Oh, well, and, this is what I was hoping, Glenn. Sixteen gig, two fifty. Yeah, that would have been thirty two gig, three twenty nine. Mm. Sixty four gig, um, you know, four fifty. Yeah, that's what I was hoping. So the, the, the Wi Fi. For 16 gig, Wi-Fi plus cellular, cellular is 509. So that, that's, yeah, getting, no, it's, that's, that's getting up that's there. That's pretty pricey. So you're paying... Am I right, 30, am I right in uh, believing that they use a different uh, dock connector as well? It's yeah. the new dock connector, yeah. Same as the iPhone 5. Is the iPad 2 the same still? The, the old dock? Is it because it's still yeah, the, the iPad one 2? They, the one that they've refreshed, the new iPad, the, you know, seven months after the iPad yeah. 3... So iPad 4 has got the new dock. Right, yes. So if you've got a current I, the current iPad 3 and you've just bought all the accessories for that, like keyboard and whatever, 
no, well, not that you use keyboard, you know, I mean, stuff that uses the dock, you can't use that with the iPad mini unless you've got an iPhone 5, in which case, yeah, great. <laughs> so the iPad, the new iPad, so it's not the iPad 3, it's just referred to as iPad um, with Retina display. So 16 gig Wi-Fi, 539. Uh, that's uh, probably not a bad. That's probably not a bad price for the proper iPad. Wi-Fi plus cellular, cellular, sixteen gig, six seventy nine. Like the dearest one you can get is Wi-Fi cellular, cellular, sixty four gig, eight ninety nine. That's up there. That's is up, that up there with the oh, Windows one? Australian, is that Australian? That's Australian prices, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so so the Mini's out. When's um? Wasn't there supposed to be an iTunes refresh coming out? Um, should have been out today. Yeah. Actually, I'm surprised. Apparently, it was supposed to incorporate the live radio uh, a function, among other things, and that didn't actually work. So they've held it back from what I've been able. Oh, to they've see. held it back. Oh, I, I, yeah. I didn't see okay. that. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, and uh, what else? What else happened at the at the keynote? The Max, new Max well, Ret- Retina. Ma- new I- Max. Oh, the, the MacBook Pro 13 inch Retina display, which is very tempting, but I don't really need another Mac at the moment. I've all got Max coming out of my. Yin yang at the if moment, I was going so. to buy a MacBook, if I was going to waste money on a MacBook, that's the one I'd buy the 13 inch. Um, I think it's a really good compromise between, you know, size and and usefulness. Yeah. How, in terms of processing power and everything. Now the new iMac that they've they've brought out. How thin is that? Oh, that thing? looks nice. That's how thin nice. is it? I don't understand Pretty where thin. where they put all the componentry. It's that thin. In the fat bit in the middle. Yeah, but if you go and have a look at it. Uh, on the keynote, and it's yeah, it's it's um, it's a nice, it's a sleek little Retina display screen. It's really nice. It's really nice. No, it's, it's not a Retina, retina actually. Oh, isn't it? It's just, oh, like, it's just, just a the... look on HD. Oh, okay. So it's just the Retinas on the laptops. On the yeah, just on the laptop. Retina, yeah. Oh, and the, the retina thinking retina is next year the MacBook Airs will have the Retina screen. Yes. So you can't make. Apparently, they have trouble making the screen bigger than. I don't know, 15 inches or something. So yeah, it's very hard to make a retina screen at you know 27 inch retina screen. It's nearly impossible. Who had the story about uh, Samsung and Apple with the screens? I saw that story. That so. would be me. Yeah, what was going on with that? That Samsung said they're not going to sell Apple screens. There was a an early uh, story early in the week where Samsung um, allegedly reported that they were allegedly said that they weren't going to supply Apple any of their screens anymore and people kind of jumped to the conclusion that that was to do with the um, court case that they lost. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a couple of days later, they uh, another story kind of came out just reversing that, basically saying, no, we didn't say that. We're quite happy to keep selling Apple um, screens and all that kind of stuff. So it was all big storm well, that's a, up kind of thing. Yeah, so I don't think Samsung's going to bite their nose off, uh, bite their nose off to spite their face. Like, they've got a billion dollars Still to make might. up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, they make some of the best quality professional grade studio monitors, you know, and monitors. So they'd be stupid to not make things that support. Although I can kind of see where they're coming from because apparently to use the new display port thingy on the Mac, you have to have the licensed mm. firmware or hardware or something. So any anything else, Eric, for Apple? Did that anything else? Um, well, other than that, that, well, the only thing that I was a bit disappointed was the um, the release date for the Wi-Fi is, is obviously November 2, pre-order tomorrow. Mm. Um, but the 3G, or the sorry, the cellular, or 4G, comes out sometime in December. No date. Why is that? Is that just, just I don't know. supply? I don't know. Obviously, they might be looking in the manufacturing stages and they can't guarantee supply, so mm. maybe they'd rather say nothing at this stage. But yeah. um, Boxing day. sometime in December. Yeah. So, you know, well, that, that it'd have you know, to December's be, a long month. It want to be before Christmas. Well, that's right. So, what, well, uh, Boxing Day, why'd you say that, Shane? Is that when you have you no, heard? No, it? just to stare Eric up. Nothing. Oh, okay. no other <laughs> well, doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter to me. Yeah, look, the iPad Mini, look, possibly I could go for the, 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 the small one. I, I do want to get something else. Yeah, don't go to the small one again. You got the small one last time and you're running out of space. If I get one, it's going to be the middle one. Mm. I find that the 32 gig is enough. Yeah. We'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. And I'll just go Wi-Fi, <laughs> oh, 3G. You know, yeah. 
Why don't do really you, need it. You don't need 3G. Stage. If you've got a phone, doesn't matter if it's Apple or Apple or Android. If you've got a phone, no. If you've got a hotspot, a phone with a hotspot, that's all you really need. Yeah. Um, um, don't want to be tied into a plan. It'd be interesting to see if Telstra comes out with any plans for this, actually. Mm, mm. Any, because any... that might make it even more affordable. Because they only they they charge forty bucks a month for a, over you know eighteen to twenty four months. You know, any it might new, be all right. Any news on the Apple TV? Was there anything? Um, I didn't see anything no. mentioned in the. Uh, I was watching. Um, I was watching the Twit coverage, and they kind of dropped hints that the um, the iMac or whatever it is the all in one thing. The just the size and the dimensions of that, and just how the fact that they've managed to squeeze everything into the actual one unit, they were implying that that's kind of you know like a test, a test, yeah, model. like a dummy run or something like yeah, dummy run, see if you can make it work, and then. Then all they do is pull the guts out of it on, on, mm. on a computer level, make it a little bit bigger, bang, you've got a TV. Well, the Mac Mini was refreshed. So I think they're testing the technology and the manufacturing of these large well, screens. I was going to say, the Mac Mini would be, would be powerful enough now. The Mac Mini? Yeah, to, to, run, a, to run a media center off it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It, uh, the, the Mac oh, Mini yeah. is just a, a magic little machine. If you, if you wanted to get a Mac and maybe it was a bit out of your price range, Look at these Mac Minis. Like that's what I've got. And you already had a screen. Yeah, bang on it. Yeah. Get oh, a Mac what's Mini. This? you can get at screens now for ninety nine dollars or less. Oh. You know, for big oh, twenty two inches. You go inches. to Dell. Yeah. Dell make fantastic screens, and mm. they're a couple of hundred bucks. You know, real HD screens. They're fantastic. Yeah, I got these uh, Samsungs that are HD. They're twenty four inch widescreen, and they were uh, hundred and twenty nine each. Yeah. Do it, yeah. They're not, My they're... brother bought a a Sony. HD TV with you know HDMI port, smart TV, you know Ethernet plugged in the back, blah blah blah. Thirty two yeah. inch, four hundred and thirty nine dollars for the screen. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah, for the no, for the TV, oh, which right. can double as a screen. Inch. Yeah, yeah. My fifty inch was only Sony HD ten eighty p. My fifty inch Samsung was only uh, five ninety nine. Yeah, that's, that's dirt good. cheap. That's smart. Yeah, we got a we got a LG fifty two inch full HD for seven fifty. Oh, God, that's <laughs> unbelievable! <laughs> oh, no. And they're light as like years ago, like four years ago when we bought the first our first big plasma. Oh, you needed a crane, I know. Oh, two people, it's a two person job, but uh, not anymore. All right, um, let's move More on. Than two people. I've got an old NEC sixty inch down in the shed that I'm just hoping to sell for parts one day. And it literally takes like four people to lift that thing. I'd hate to try and wall mount. <laughs> those those two, take the wall out. Those two, that, that, I, paid, I paid five grand for my forty-two inch LG. Did I get ripped off? Five grand. No, it depends how. It depends when you bought it, mate. Yeah, it would have been about five um, years. I've been married for when it first came out. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, it would have been about five years ago. Five, seven years. Yeah, ago. it's about right. I've got. I did my renovations in my house here five years ago. Bought two Sony. 42-inch flat screens. They were 3,300 each Yeah, back in 2007. And that yeah. Sony... Still that, got them. They still work well. And that would have been LCD? Those ones? LCD. Yep. LCD, not plasma. And, and that... Because I know someone with one of those screens. I hate them. I, I think they're the, it's got the, a really bad picture. Pixelates. Um, but that's, that's all Depends technology which one. Changed. The LCD, these... If you bought a Sony LCD now, you oh, couldn't tell the difference no, between that, that and the plasma. Yeah, now's no drama. But five years ago... Yeah. Depending on which one you got, you feel like punching the screen. Look, I'm a, I'm a plasma boy. <laughs> I like plasmas. That's what I yeah, like. Yeah, big plasma. plasma all over. <laughs> all right. Plasma, Windows 8, you're on the dark side. Yep. <laughs> now, well, now we're, we're moving on to uh, another one here I've got here. Now, Cyanogen Mod, everyone's um, into, into um, modding their Android phones and all this sort of stuff to get some different features or whatever, not happy with the, the, the rubbish that the providers put on there. So, so Android mod developers have removed code that logged device screen lock patterns. So if you've got a Cyanogen modded what? phone, Cyanogen Mod 10, I believe, is the, the, um, the nasty little version, uh, but they've, they've removed the code. So, what hap- so you know when you had in the uh, Android, you swipe to unlock? Like you've got a pattern. You can program a pattern in, a swipe pattern. So like you get know, or something like that, and it was remembering that pattern and storing it in a file. So hence, someone could come along, look at the file, look at the pattern, and get into your phone. So um so anyway so it probably it wasn't put there 
so they think maliciously. It was just a bit of leftover no, code. What it, the reason it was? It, yeah, exactly. It was code that was never corrected because it was mm. there. Because originally you only had a three by three grid to do your pattern, mm. and then they updated that to allow four by four up to a six by six grid. And the reason it stored your password was so it knew what grid to bring up on the screen. Um, it was obviously never meant to be in plain text. It was just something that was overlooked. Mm. A senior threat anal- analyst at antivirus vendor Bitdefender said Tuesday in, the, in, a, uh, in an email, most probably it's a snippet of code used during debugging and forgotten when committing the code. So some, some boffin just, just said, oh, look, I don't know, how do you stumble across code that's not supposed to be there? So someone stumbled across it and said this. Now, according to statistics, the official builds of Cyanogen Mod are installed on 1.137 million devices and uh, an unofficial builds on 1.366 devices. The nightly builds of Cyanogen Mod 10 are currently the most popular versions of Cyanogen Mod and account for over 240,000 official installs. So those numbers aren't real big when you consider the the enormity of uh, Android installs, but uh, but for one particular uh, sk- uh, skin or, or, or version of the Android, uh, that, that's they're not going too bad. Now, just uh, before we leave on the Android, I've got another another little story that little nasty story for Android people, but the amount of mobile. Android malware has surged this year from a count of 30,000 malware specimens in June to almost 175,000 last month, according to uh, Trend Micro Security Roundup report. So you'd have to probably believe it. The Trend Micro report has uh, notes the fake versions of legitimate Android apps are the most prevalent type of Android malware. And uh, they, they're saying that there's also problems because there's like hundreds of different stores as well. Uh, things just can't be... Uh, controlled as much as probably as much as There's they want to be. Obviously, the official Play Store, but there are lots of hacked stores out there. If you have a rooted device and you have your um, administrative privileges, then you can install these uh, these hacked um, these hacked stores, and then you can get apps and things for free. Um, the downside to that, obviously, is there's no vetting process mm. to go through. So there's you're sort of own. nothing protecting you. Uh, unless, of course, you do run, you know, AVG and, and Advast and, and all that, all those guys do actually have um, basically, you know, virus scanners for your phone. Mm. Um, so I, as what... far as I'm aware, there hasn't been any, there may have been one or two, but there hasn't been any real cases of viruses coming from the app store per se, the legitimate one, there has been some app in-app purchases that have opened that up. Mm. So well, well, apparently they're, um, the, the security companies are saying to, if you've got an Android phone, to install malware, um, you know, um, antivirus software. So I guess you get that in the store, Will, antivirus software? You can, yeah. Just uh, so, so, I mean, a lot of the, the big name companies obviously have it on their website, but it's just easy to search it, search for it in the Play Store. Um, you know, it, it's good if you have, like in my case, I use AVG on my PC. So, I, I, if I was going to install one, I would install AVG on my on my device. Um, they there are half a dozen free ones. There's uh, a vast, there's ABG, there's, I think there's a McAfee one, which I just, say, I just don't like McAfee, same as Norton. Um, McAfee's as bad as the bloody virus itself. Yeah, so is Norton. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. agree. Um, you know, there are there are two or three there. But, look, it never hurts because it is also possible to get viruses through SMSs or through emails in exactly the same way you do on a PC. At the end of the day, you're carrying a computer in your pocket. Um, it's... It's just as vulnerable to to a, to a computer. So, if you're smart about it, you'll never have a problem. But if you do want to do things that aren't, you know, 100% certified, um, then just be a little bit smart about it. Put a bit of, you know, put mm. some protection on. So, despite the get surge, off the porn sites. Despite, that's what I say. <laughs> despite the surge, well, no, actually, ironically, the porn sites are, don't generally. They're one of the cleanest sites you can go to. How would you know that, Will? And I was just going to ask that. Statistically. Yeah. 
<laughs> statistically yep. speaking, uh, and statistically you know, speaking, statistic, you know, you know, you know the thing about statistics: only forty percent of them are true. <laughs> yeah, but seventy percent are false. Despite the surge in mobile malware, it's still far below the many millions of Microsoft Windows-based malware variants. Uh, currently, the surprise is that Saudi Arabia uh, has suddenly come from nowhere to become the top spam-sending country. Look at those Saudis. <laughs> There's a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what I reckon? I reckon it's the existing spammers have just rerouted it through Saudi Arabia to make it look like it's coming from Saudi Arabia. Yeah. <laughs> probably, probably. Now, I've got that. Has anyone, have everyone uh, got all their stories out? Uh, there's, a, there's a few more, but... Uh, Any, like, important ones? Um, I, I, I stumbled... The, when you, when, I'll do one after Will. Okay. I was going to say, there's, there's no really important ones. There's, um, let's see, new Chromebook is due to come out. So that'll... I actually am looking forward to that. I'll, I wouldn't mind... I mean... The idea behind a Chromebook, it's a lightweight, effectively a throwaway PC, no data stored on the PC. It's all stored in the cloud. Of course, in this country, with data being as expensive as it is, um, I, they're probably going to have a hard time taking off. But they're only you know $250 laptop, so that they're capable of playing high-def movies, so we'll see. Um, but... Uh, the other thing I want to mention quickly is there's been a lot of people upset with the Galaxy S3, uh, oh. the 4G, um, oh, no. because it was still running the older version of Android. Uh, and so a lot of people have been t- taking the Galaxy Note 2 because it has the uh, it has Jelly Bean on it. So um, what they've done is they've found the, the international version, at least, if you've got it on the grey market, uh, has finally been okay to receive the new update for Jelly Bean. Uh, of course, if yours is still network locked, it's going to be entirely up to the network provider when they decide to give it to you. Now, Eric, so, um, is the iPhone locked? iPhone 5 locked to Telstra? Do you know? Um, yes, it is, but you can have it unlocked for free. Just by asking? Have just you got by to, ringing them up and asking them. Have you got to give them a reason or they'll just do it? No, no reason. No, eh? All you do, you, well, the, the best reason to give them, even if it's not true, is tell them that you're going overseas and you need to put a SIM card in it. Yeah. They go, yeah, no problem. Can you, because they're the micro SIM cards, can you buy those overseas? Or, or nano, how? SIM. It's a nano SIM. Nano yeah. SIM, sorry. It's yes. smaller than a micro. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, nano. So they're, they're available. You can buy those. Yeah, they're available. For any, any, any provider overseas that sells iPhone 5, any telco, will have a nano SIM mm. and a prepaid plan to go with it. Right, yeah, fair enough. Um, all right, so you had a story, Eric, you were saying. Well, being the end of the year, a lot of firms come out with their top tech 10, top tech 10 tech trends. <laughs> Can I say that five times? You can't even say it once. Top 10 tech trends for 2013s. Yes. Orlando, Florida, first came the heavy adoption of Apple's mobile platform by consumers whose heavy use for devices for business forced the IT operators at their companies to support them. Then came Android, now it's Windows 8. And uh, so the mobile device battle is hotting up and they say that is going to be the top technology trend for 2013. There are 10 10 trends that he's listed and I'll read them out for you. What Gartner, a very well-known IT research firm, Mm. thinks is going to be the top 10. Number one, want me to count down from 10 to 9? 10 to 1? Yes. I'll do from 10 to 1. Yep. Number 10, enterprise app stores. Enterprise app stores will turn IT departments into market managers, providing governance and even support to app entrepreneurs. You know, yep, really yep. cheesy. Yep. Nine, virtual appliances and integrated ecosystems. You can read about that on my notes. Eight, in memory computing. And this is, it allows hours-long batch processes to be squeezed into processes that only take minutes or seconds. Yeah, right, right. Seven. Yep. It's all very boring. (laughs) Actionable analytics. Uh, This is a, uh, what is this? Low-cost processing to perform analytics and simulation for each and every action taken in business. That's what that is. You can see these are going to go, going to trend their backsides off. 
Yeah, I'm going to go nowhere. Um, six, strategic big data, they've called it. It's becoming more economical, thanks in part to low-cost service and CPUs, for organisations to tackle big data projects. Okay. Right. Cloud computing, we all know what that yep. means. That's number five. Number four, the Internet of Things. Everything will connect to the internet, cameras, microphones, augment, augmented reality, buildings, embedded sensors everywhere, refrigerators. It's already oh, here, yeah, a lot yeah. of this stuff. Yep. Now, just, just before so, you go on to the, the top three. Yes. I just want to show everyone a photo of something, and I want you to think about it while Eric does the top three. Okay. Okay. Because uh, what I want you to what I want to know is, and it won't it won't hurt the people that are on the podcast. You'll you'll see why. But what is in that building? Oh, I know. Oh, uh, Will knows. Does, any, farm. does anyone in the chat room know what is in that building? And after the top three of Eric's trending crazily. Te- tech topics. We'll come back. We'll find out if Will or anyone in the lounge is right. So, Eric, top three. It's, it's the um, right. it's the American Pickers hideaway. It could be. <laughs> <laughs> could be. Top top three. Um, top three. Microsoft had the personal cloud. Yeah. Number three. The personal cloud replaces the notion of personal computer. The cloud will house all aspects of one's life um, because it's so vast and capable of marshalling infinite resources. Blah 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 blah. Uh, number two, a long-term shift from native apps to web apps, such as HTML5. And number one, yes. drum roll. Hang on. No, I can't. can I do a drum roll? No. What's you can do a drum roll. I, I can, but it might take a while. Go on. <laughs> it's going to take Jeez. a while. Jeez. The suspense He's got is killing me. first. I've got, to, I've got to find the drums. Let me get the drum kit out of the garage. <laughs> yeah, you all need. Hang on. Someone's got the drum kit. Did you hear it? Number one, mobile devices. That's oh, it. Oh, really? We all could have guessed that. Mobile devices. Hang on. Where are we? There we go. All right. Yeah, enough go. mugging around. <laughs> Let's get let's what so what's in the lens? Anyone been been guessing what where where where's my picture? What's in there? Where is it first? Can you tell me what city? Let's drop a few hints. What city is it in? Uh it is in a place called Beth's Den. So That's where that would be in um England. Okay. Um the Prime Minister's residence. We've had guesses of <laughs> Microsoft headquarters, cloud headquarters, Facebook home. Zinger's new office. <laughs> Somebody's drug lab, but no. Do you want to know what Frosty's it is? meth lab. <laughs> what it is. There's nothing that exciting. What is it? Well, it, it is the home of Flossie. Now, <laughs> who now, the hell is Flossie? Flossie is not a cow, by the way. Now, Will, you knew the answer, didn't you? I did. Only because I was actually reading the story about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> One of the world's <laughs> oldest commercial computers has been brought back to life by two enthusiasts in a barn in Kent. Oh, there you go, Kent. The ICT-1301 yeah. uh, computer known as Flossie was restored to work- working order on its 50th anniversary by engineers Roger Holmes and Rod Brown. The six-metre machine... Wow. Was that's tall, six meters tall. That's like one of your computers, Will. <laughs> it's built to replace <laughs> rows of clerks during office work and featured in the 1974 James Bond film, The Man with the Golden Gun. Bought for 200 pounds in 2003, it has the had it has one hundredth of the power of a smartphone. Now here's here's inside the barn. Here's Floss. There's Flossie. Mr. Holmes, a computer con- cons- conservation society volunteer said it was a unique machine imp- important for putting modern technology into content. Flossie original, originally cost £250,000 to build in 1962, the equivalent of £4.2 million today, which is, what, about eight, $8 million? It has 100,000 yeah. punch cards, 27 reels of magnetic tape, both to record data, and its 12 kilobytes of memory alone weigh half a tonne. <laughs> <laughs> 12 kilobytes of memory. 
Well done. Yeah, 12 kilobytes. Now, each piece of memory has five lengths of wire. Hey, you know, hey, Glenn, don't laugh. Your old Android was that about, <laughs> about that. That's what it connected to in the background. <laughs> Mr. Brown said, you have to remember that file reels in those days were multi-reel. So a 10 meg reel, a ten, so, so at 10 meg a reel, 27 reels were, were up to a quarter of a gigabyte. And 50 years ago, that was a lot of data. Now, Flossing's computer... That's wrong. What? 10 times 27 is... Oh, 270. Yeah, oh, I guess. I'm not going to do Actually. the math. Um, Fozzie's computing... Flossie's computing power is... Rough, <laughs> it's roughly equivalent to a digital watch. The whole barn. How's that? <laughs> the whole barn. The, com- uh, uh, digital, the, the computing power... That should the, be in a museum, not in a barn. Well, they, they restored it. So the computing power of the huge machine is, uh, is tiny by modern standards at a, at a minuscule 2K of memory running at 1 megahertz speed. That flies. Oh, my God. That's flying. Now, technology has progressed so much that it's 16,000 transistors, 4,000 logic boards could fit into two 10 millisilicon chips today. 10 millimeters. All, duty. all that into 10 millimeters of chip. While it... Well, yeah, so the lesson here is, people, when your phone doesn't work, stop whinging. You could be stuck <laughs> with that. When it's 27 reels of man- magnetic tape and 100,000 punch cards would fit fit on less than a third of a CD. Flossie <laughs> was used yeah, as a prop yeah. in James Bond. The man Flossie's was- not a cow. Flossie's an old dog. <laughs> and I was also the, used... Um, Doctor Who. Live Commodore any day. Oh, that's right. Oh, And also used in Doctor Who and Blake 7. There you go. There you go. And now, look, um, yes, we better hurry up and get going. But, uh, look, Shane's brought a few topics just for a quick discussion, but um, we've uh, covered most of them. Uh, One of them there was GoDaddy went down again earlier in the week. Uh, Well, he goes down all the time these days, isn't he? Yeah. Um, uh, GoDaddy GoDaddy needs to go away. Is it still supporting that uh, three strikes policy? I'm not sure. No, it wasn't even three strikes. It was one complaint and they pulled your site. Sweet. But what about the what about the ads though and the girls? Well, they're all oh, right. Yeah, well, that's the whole point. <laughs> Cheesy ads. What? <laughs> yeah, there's videos. Yeah, as well. Anyway, that's a, that's a, that's an after show discussion. That one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, TV proving a turn off for kids' internet usage sooner overtake time spent in front of the TV. Uh, we, and now, look, here's one. What do you think, uh, Charlotte Dawson scenario? She was she was bagged by trolls and actually outed them on TV. So I reckon it's leave them alone. Walk away. She's yeah. an idiot. Yeah. Well, it, she, she came face to face with one. I don't know who, how that was all set up. Well, but, what's the point of that? The guy's still, still, still going to com, com, continue being a bleep. Do you know what, so, do you know what he said? Just guy, move on. Do you know what the guy said? He what? Got, someone said to him, why'd you do it or what, whatever? And he goes, well, it's not real. <laughs> he goes, Twitter, well, it's not real. But, I mean, uh, how stupid. Well, like, that's the whole, that, so that is a problem. When, when kids on the other side of the internet don't realise what, they're doing that's that's something that has to be addressed but at you the don't. same time let's face it charlotte dawson if she was uh actually doing something with her life that was um keeping her in the public eye for legitimate reasons she wouldn't need to go on current affair and do that crap yeah it's rubbish isn't it's it like, publicity stunt yeah well get her back on the front page because she misses it yeah it may, just it, walk away these what, trolls are idiots don't yeah. don't give them air that's right don't it's, feed the trolls you got to walk away like well, it's sticks and stones. What, why can't we get back to sticks and That's stones? It. That's right. You know, like, get cares? over it. Move yeah, on. Exactly. Like, the guy's a, a, a bleep and he'll always be a bleep. Yeah. Well, well apparently I never watched the what, whatever show she was on, Australia's Top Model or something. But, like, you know, apparently she was a bit of a mole to the to the girls. But at least it was done face well, to face. apparently she was. So, you know, was maybe that's why she copped a lot of hat, a lot of mm. flack. Mm. Maybe she should, uh, these people that get attacked should have a look at themselves. As yeah. well, make sure that they're not the cause of it. Glass houses. A lot of the time, they're not the cause of it. Don't get me wrong, because mm. um, you know these guys are just out of control. But there would be cases where they bring it on themselves. I mean, a very few cases, one in a, one in a hundred thousand. But still, yeah. you know, yeah, have but, a good look at yourself. But she could have like a tweet is what 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 a second in your life, a second in the whole universal time sort of thing. So and yeah. it happens and it it's goes. Just, it's a drop in the ocean. In the whole, and all, put it in perspective. Walk away. Yeah. Do you think that anyone's really going to retweet that? I don't know if it was or not, but well, who cares anyway? It goes round the round and round for about two days, and it'll drop away. Oh God, then... If I was worried about what everyone ever said about me, I would have killed myself a long time ago. 
That's right. Yeah, I don't know. What's, what's wrong with this place? So, you know, just, just toughen up. Take a drink yeah. a glass of cement. All right. That's it. All right. So that brings us to the end of the show. Uh, so another another uh, lengthy one tonight, but we, there was a lot to talk oh, about. Lengthy and uh, and uh, robust Mike, show. <laughs> that's right. We'd, Microsoft we'd, filled show, fanboy Microsoft, and I'm upset. <laughs> you love it. You love it. Now, <laughs> now I you must can... admit I didn't include any um, Apple stories because I thought that yeah you know, other people would have done that and it would have been. Yeah. Well, that's well exactly, I tried to, mate. I thing. tried to, mate, but I was I was I was. Um, I was hijacked, let's say. Oh, look, Apple, Apple's had its day in the sun. Yeah, you, you well, it's had its day in the sun for about the last 280 days. So <laughs> you got to be fair. you got to be fair. Look, if you want to watch the video of the show, the video of the live recording of the show, just go to the homepage and, uh, and grab it from there. Uh, so the paper, paper, uh, what is it? What's the, what's the paper? AussieTechHouse.com.au forward slash paper. Um, puts together some stories twice a day for you to read on your tablet, on the computer, wherever you want, on your phone. Wherever you want to do it, don't forget the Twitter news feed at Aussie Tech News. You can uh, pop to a few little news stories, uh, breaking in current news stories into your Twitter feed. Not a bad little thing. There's a few people have, have signed up to that. Um, don't forget the forum's still around on the AussieTechEds.com.au website. Still there, still there. It's uh, I know Facebook is the rage of these days, but the forum's still there. We'll get. We'll sorry about uh, Gas Audio Review, but uh, we'll get that sorted for next week. I'll um. Next, we'll get... next thing you'll be telling me, you've still got a MySpace page. Well, it's still up there somewhere. <laughs> Never been there. And um, what else is there? There's uh, the audible.com. You get you can still get your free uh, free book from audible.com if you haven't signed up yet. You can still go and do that. Link from the homepage. And that's about all. So if you want to contact us, us emails, Glenn, Eric, Will, Shane at aussietechheads.com.au. Now, Eric's with a K, Shane with a Y, S-H-A-Y-N-E at aussietechheads.com. Will's just how it sounds and, and I'm just how it sounds. And... Uh, <laughs> And Twitter and what else? Eric's with a K, by the way. What happens? Eric with a K, what do I say? That's what I said. Didn't I? Yeah, you said how it sounds. Well, it sounds like a C. So sometimes people write C. Hmm. And not meaning Eric. (laughs) 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 If you want to get us on the Twitter... Just go to Facebook to uh, find out what that one is. Now, if you want to get us on the Twitter, it's at Aussie Tech Heads for me, at Eric Franco with a K, at Mr. Tompkins, <laughs> Mr. Tompkinson for Will, and at Shane1973 for Shane. All right. Anyone else got anything parting words? Oh, there's a MySpace page. What's that one? Yep. Aussie Tech Heads. Still going, <laughs> eh? How oh. many hits? Thousands. Uh. Um, well, you've had uh, the last episode. I'm trying to look at the last episode. I don't think so it doesn't even say what the last episode is. Yeah, but episode 90. Uh, your last login was... Um, yeah, I logged in this month. Was Oh, yeah. There you go. I just wanted to see what it was all <laughs> oh, about. Your profile views, 11,697. There you go. Hey, look at, <laughs> look, look at me join date, 2006. Hey, hey. <laughs> MySpace, MySpace me off. There Where's... you go. Featured song, Harry Potter, released 2007. That'd be that'd be Mark's song. Push play. Let's hear that. What's that about? <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, I forget which. I forget what that was. Let's hear it. Well, there could be a reason for that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, but... It's an ABBA thing. <laughs> Hang on. Frame on display. Figure rates and card games I'll never play. <laughs> all right, all right. On that note, we better get out of here. It sounded like death warmed up. Yeah, notice for that. Yeah, it sounded like <laughs> sounded like death warmed up. All right. <laughs> so that's it. That's it. Jane, thanks for coming along. Thanks for joining. No problem. Thanks for joining us for episode two hundred uh, three hundred thirteen. Uh, and and Shane, it looks like he's in. He's taken up photography and he's in the dark room. He's uh, developing some <laughs> some roles. <laughs> <laughs> That's Will. See you, Will. See you, next, see you next week, Will. And uh, we'll see you, Eric, as well. See you next week, Eric. See you, guys. And uh, we'll see you next week at the same time, same, same tech time, same tech channel. So until then, thanks for listening. Look after yourselves. Bye for now. Ta-da.